Good job, Anita. It's fun to hear about all the sizzle. Now we got to talk about the steak a little bit. So AJ and I will get into that. Uh, it's great seeing everybody here. It's taken me five years to learn who all of you are and who you work for and there's a few new faces, but by and large I feel like this is a group that uh, I'm comfortable with that I've gotten to know over the years and uh, you represented uh, us fairly and I appreciate everything that you do. So thanks for, thanks for coming out and thanks for being partners with us in this, in this initiative. Uh, this is uh, always a fun opportunity to talk a little bit about what happened last year and kind of tie a bow on it and then look forward to uh, to next year, to this year that's coming up. Um, and so I wanted to just uh, do that for a second. And uh, really, Gene talked about the journey that we've been on. Um, two years ago, we had a really good roll of the dice. It was a fun year between Carlos Correa winning the Rookie of the Year and Dallas Keuchel winning the Cy Young. Mike Fires no hitter, us beating the Yankees in New York, taking Kansas City all the way to the brink. Uh, it was really an exciting year for our fans and I think uh, got everybody uh, ready for what was to come. Last year, we essentially brought back the same team with the exception that we had made a big trade for Ken Giles to uh, solidify the bullpen. And we felt good going into the year. Uh, we felt like we had a team that could compete for the division and get back to the playoffs. We got off to a rough start. We faced some adversity. The guys fought really hard in the middle to get back to 500 and then to get back into the division contention. Uh, and then we essentially ran out of gas towards the end between the uh, injuries we had to McCullers and Keuchel and Valbuena um, and, and just the, the strong effort that we put up in June, July, and beginning of August to get back into contention. We just didn't, we didn't quite have enough. And I think um, it was unfortunate because we were hoping for more, but there were quite a few bright spots in last year's team that are worth uh, talking about before we move on to this year. Um, Jose Altuve, you know, third in the MVP voting, you could argue any one of the three final candidates should have been uh, the MVP. He had a terrific year and continues to have better and better years despite being one of the best players in baseball already. Our rookie contributions from Alex Bregman, I mean, if we think about it as an organization, how fortunate are we to have three years in a row rookies coming up like George Springer and then Carlos Correa and now Alex Bregman. Those are three elite level players and they're all in the beginnings of their career and they're all players that were produced by our farm system and are gonna be here for a while. Um, Joe Musgrove, terrific debut once he got here. Chris Davinsky, really one of our unsung heroes last year uh, and, and a key part of our bullpen. Um, and Michael Feliz had a run there in the middle of the summer, which was really important for us to get back in this thing. Our bullpen also was a bright spot, really has been a bright spot for the last two years. And despite some, some struggles and some blown saves and a couple different uh, players in different roles, I think towards the end we really saw what, uh, what Ken Giles is capable, the swing and miss stuff that he has. Uh, Will Harris was an all-star. Gregerson was really solid in late innings, and, and Davinsky was the secret weapon that AJ could bring in any time from the fourth to the seventh to get those key outs. So uh, there were some really exciting and um, positive parts to last year, but we fell short of our goal. And make no mistake, our goal is to get back to the playoffs, and our goal is to win in the playoffs. So as we were preparing for 2017, we knew we had several players, Castro, Valbuena, Rasmus, that were entering free agency and didn't know if we would uh, get them back. Uh, we had either released or traded several players that had been mainstays, uh, Gomez, um, Nishek, Feldman. And so we had some work to do. Uh, the good part is that we had, we have a, a young core of players, which includes Altuve and Springer, Correa, Bregman, Gaddis, Marisnik, Gonzo in the lineup um, that we felt uh, was a really good starting point going into this year. Um, but we had to provide some uh, additional reinforcements around them. And really what we were looking for, we knew we needed a catcher. Uh, we had two outfield spots open um, and we needed a starting pitcher. And not only that, we needed to figure out a way to make our lineup a little bit more balanced. A lot of right-handed hitters in that group that I said was coming back. 
And so we were definitely looking to get some more switch hitters or left-handed hitters into the lineup to give AJ more options. So our two main objectives were to uh, change the lineup, lengthen the lineup, add more uh, balance to the lineup, and to give us some more uh, pitching depth. Our offseason really started with the acquisition of Yulieski Guriel, Yuli Guriel, in, in August of last year. We looked ahead at the offseason, uh, who was going to be free agents. We knew we were going to need some offensive help, and he was available in the middle of the season. We were fortunate enough to have support from ownership to go after him and offer a, a, a pretty sizable contract and get him signed. And he had a nice debut. I don't think we know exactly what kind of player he's going to be yet because we haven't seen him come into camp after a normal off season and, and start with us from the beginning. Um, I think there's a lot of upside uh, in Yuli. There's a reason why he was one of the best players in Cuba for a, for a decade, and I think we're going to see that this year. Uh, we claimed this was a move that wasn't really talked about a ton, but claiming Nori Aoki off of waivers I think is, is going to be, uh, at the end of the day, one of the important moves that we made this off season. Um, this is a player that has a different style of play, and a lot's been written about the last five years, the feast or famine offense that we've been putting out there, and, and to a certain extent, the league has moved in that direction, but we're now moving in a little bit of an opposite direction as our players come up. Uh, they've been taught to play uh, a little bit more contact, and guys like Aoki that have a, a on-base contact approach are going to really uh, lengthen our lineup so that we don't suffer these issues of maybe the last three or four guys in the lineup not being able to deliver with guys on base. So um, Aoki, uh, nice pickup for us. We then signed Charlie Morton. We had Charlie Morton identified early in the offseason as a high priority pitcher that we wanted to pursue. Uh, we knew that he had had some injury issues in his past, but we also felt very comfortable that when he is healthy and pitching, he is a very strong contributor and can be a big part of our team this year. So uh, we feel good about his status, and we think he's going to be an important part of our rotation. For catching, Gaddis did a great job for us last year, no doubt. And, and once it became clear that Castro was probably not going to uh, come back to us, uh, we really ratcheted up our efforts to uh, bring in Brian McCann. We've been talking to the Yankees for a while. and uh, and. For us, it probably the best fit. Uh, fortunately, he had a no trade clause, and, and he was able to uh, allow the Yankees to trade him here. Uh, he likes what he saw here. He, he uh, has a relationship with AJ, and he wants to win. And so we had all the fundamentals in place to attract him, uh, being a left-handed hitter, a good defensive catcher, um, and really all around good clubhouse leader. I think he's going to be a, a terrific addition. Um, Josh Reddick is a player we had identified mid last season as someone we knew was going to be a free agent and we were going to uh, would, would potentially be a good fit with us left-handed hitting outfielder we'd seen a lot of them in his days with Oakland uh, we had talked a little bit about trying to acquire him during the trade deadline but once he went to Los Angeles we knew there was not going to be draft pick compensation associated with him so he kind of went up our list um, and we were able to get a deal done by being aggressive early in the offseason with him and then Carlos Beltran was our last big move and really that was a uh, Carlos didn't have to sign anywhere. Uh, yeah, he could have signed anywhere. Um, he, it was his choice, essentially. Several teams were pursuing him, and, and he wanted to be a place where he felt was a good fit for him. So a lot of that was less about the money and more about the relationship. And, and AJ did a terrific job um, of, of trying to convince him to come here, and ultimately uh, we got that done. So um, that's a lot. And I got to give our ownership group a round of applause for allowing us the resources to go after that many players. When you have you know, a young group, a core like we have, it would have been perfectly fine for them to say, you, you got a good young core, you should have a good team. Um, you, know, you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money. But we did, we made those investments, and we feel like that sets us up very well for the next four to five years. Um, not only that, we maintained the medium and long-term health of this organization. And I know that's something that um, doesn't necessarily become a priority for fans or the media in the short term. And it's hard to, uh, it's easy to lose sight of that. But for us, 
We came out of this offseason with our first round draft pick intact. We came out of this offseason with most of our top 10, top, top 20 prospects intact. And in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of the uh, pundits, we have uh, one of the top farm systems in all of baseball. So to be in a position right now where we are looking good for this year, we've got a good young core of players that can be around, and we have a good farm system is an enviable position and one that I'm really happy we're in because we're going to need it. Whether we're going to need it by bringing up players mid-season to help us out, uh, to fill in for injuries, players that are having great seasons in AA and AAA, or whether we're going to need it in June, July to go out and acquire players that we think we need for a playoff push uh, and to do well in the playoffs, it's there. And it's an incredibly valuable resource, and we've seen other teams uh, use it uh, at the right time, and, and we will use it at the right time to improve our team. Um, we also fortunately picked up uh, two additional draft picks for this next year, so we have five in the top 100. We, uh, we invested in the international market this last year, uh, overspent our allotment, paid a, a hefty price and tax to do it, but we acquired several players that we think are going to help us out in the three to ten year time frame. So um, the organization is extremely healthy in terms of our players, both at the big leagues as well as uh, throughout our minor league system. So as we think about 2017 and where we are right now, uh, this is something I am always reluctant to say, but it is true. We are healthy right now, and we know we're not going to be healthy the whole year. We know we're going to have some, uh, some setbacks, but as, as a group right now, and this is before people show up to spring training, and there's always some nicks that we find out about then, but as a group, uh, we're healthy. Our guys are, are reporting they're feeling good, um, and I think uh, that's a good starting point. We'd rather be there than, than already know that we've got two or three guys that are, uh, that are not going to start the season healthy. We have the depth to survive a few bumps along the road, and I know a lot's been written about us acquiring more, more pitchers, uh, but we have essentially at least six starting pitchers com competing for five spots, and we have five or six guys behind them. Any one of them steps up in spring training, they could easily make our team, and we're going to have three or four of them in AAA ready to back us up. So the biggest vulnerability I think any team faces, including ourselves, is uh, starting pitching health and keeping the guys out there and getting you through five, six innings of every game with a chance to win. Our offense is probably going to – put up enough runs where if our starting pitchers stay out there six innings a game, we should be, we should be okay. Um, I do believe our bullpen is going to be a strength again this year for the, uh, for the third time. And the, the final part is really about our offense. You know, last year when we got off to that bad start, we didn't have a whole lot of choices as far as switching players in the lineup. I mean, you know, AJ did his best. Everybody did their best to try and tinker with the lineup to give guys different looks. But you know, we had to keep running guys out there. And, and this year, I think we've got enough weapons, enough righties and lefties and different types of hitters and people that play different positions that we're going to be able to mix and match. And it will, it will prevent us from going into a, any sort of prolonged slump, I hope. Obviously, we've got to play the games. But that sort of flexibility, having there's going to be three players on the bench every night that really feel like they deserve and in, on the other teams would be in the starting lineup. Those are good weapons to have because if we if someone goes through an early season slump, uh, you know they don't have to play every day. So, I think that's going to be a big part of it. And the other big part of it is the veteran leadership that we've acquired and is now in the clubhouse between Beltran and, and McCann and Raddick. Um, these are guys that have been through the, the highs and the lows of a season. And even though our our young group, Carlos and Springer and Altuve, they've now been together for a few years and they've experienced highs and lows, it's, it's just a, a real positive to have other guys in the clubhouse who can talk you through it, who can give you strategies on how to come out of a slump, all that. So um, I think that that's where the veteran leadership is really going to uh, manifest itself, is, is helping us avoid any prolonged slumps. And if, heck, if we can avoid uh, getting off to a bad start like we did last year, um, I, think, I think chances are good that we're going to be seeing baseball in October here. So that's, that's all I've got. Um, I hope you share the enthusiasm. Um, our fans around town are, are definitely uh, looking forward to this year.
I, I sense it. I sensed it at Fan Fest. I sense it around around town, and a lot of it is the the work that you all do in in presenting what it is that we're doing and giving us the coverage that we do. So I do thank you for that, and I look forward to a tremendous year in partnership with you this year on the field, and and hopefully it ends in late October. Thank you.